And welcome back, everybody. Aesop Grimm here, and this is the continuation of our Skyrim Chronicle. I just need to... There was something funny that happened in my transition. I have to make sure I've got the screen capture happening. Okay, I do. And, um... This is a in, local favorite. In this episode, I want to try and get Ragnar the new Red. enchant. Oh, once was a hero named Ragnar the Red who came I want to get new enchants done for a ring and amulet, which means I need a ring and amulet. And, as he told of both battles in gold he had made. and uh, we're going to go with the... We're going to try and get plus 25%. One handed. But then he went quiet, did Ragnar the Red when he met the shield. Bucks, he's talking to me about health regen. Regen rates drop oh, massively during combat. Oh, he, he says don't even be interested in health regen at all. It's really not, not very good in Skyrim. Okay. Okay, that's, that's pretty good advice. Thank you, Bucks. Alright. Where are we at with quests also? So I'm looking for a ring and an amulet, which I can also buy. And then I need to put the enchants on them. So I'm going to need an enchanting potion again. That means I need a blue swallowtail. Uh, we got the Lost Expedition. We got Blood on the Ice. What's in the miscellaneous? Find someone who can identify the unusual gem. Ask around Rift and see if anyone knows Esper, and that's the main quest right there. Question the witness in Windhelm. Oh yeah, that's right, I didn't mean to start that. Let's see if we can get that knocked out. Okay, let's take a look at our stats too, because they are, they're different now. We're we're starting to get pretty strong. I've also, uh, I should tell the recording too, I just got done talking about this on stream, but I've reset back to default the Harlinson's ENV because more and more areas were showing up as extremely oversaturated in brightness. And that's because I could not find the setting that we adjusted either, but there's a setting we adjusted. We adjusted the heck out of it. I went from zero to like, at, to its max. It was plus four. And uh, it just really kind of was ruining everything. So I'm, I'm uh, back to the default. Okay, we are doing 102 damage with our one-hander. And we have 450 armor rate. I favor raw health and potions, or fortify health, and healing potions. Ah, okay. You can also make more than one piece of equipment. I mean, like, two or three rings. That's true. Joa mentioned that also. I can barely see the horse armor. Yeah, sorry about that, bud. Um, one more thing I can try. Cathedral weather settings, then you go. This will brighten up the day also. That's why I don't really like to adjust it. So we're in deep shadow right here. And here's moonlit path. Fast travel to uh, here we are out in, uh, basking in moonlight here. Maybe it's OBS settings. I don't know. It could be. We're at the edge of my technical know-how on this kind of stuff. But. Um, My OBS settings have been working really good for me on, on a whole number of videos. 
for C for Joa looks good. That's that's the thing about about color grading. And Buxy, you and I were talking about, you know, you, you're wanting to get into recording. That's one of the things that, that's going to be a challenge, is trying to set your monitor up so that you can adjust your settings for something that's very neutral to most of the internet. Because the, there's no standard for these monitors. And um, viewing experiences can... You're, you're wanting to hit the widest part of your audience because there's no such thing as getting 100% for everybody. There's just too many different kinds of monitor settings out there, VA, and, and different monitor types. Anybody in the audience like watching future YouTube stuff, if you can give me some feedback. See, for me, for me, the way that this looks right now at night, I would not play like this. On my own personal game, this is too bright. And I like dark stuff. I, I'm the one that's played the survival mods where you need, um, you need a lantern and a torch to be able to see 10 feet in front of you. But I don't always play that way, but so if if I'm not though, I definitely am not this bright. This is very bright. This is this, this looks like daytime to me. There there should be shadows off over there. You know, whenever all you've got are the, I mean I've been in campsites before. These fires don't reach this far. You know? <laughs> and so the ambient lighting in this is very bright for me. Now, it's not so bright that I'm not willing to play. It doesn't break immersion or anything, but it's very bright. And I'm wondering what that looks like to other people. And so I'm very much open to feedback and comments so that maybe a future Skyrim series, I can have it dialed in a little bit more. Oh, you think the audio is better? You know, that's that's the other thing. I um I I don't know how to standardize that either, because I'm working off of a boom mic off of my um headset. And so whenever I put that thing on, where that is in relation to my mouth is gonna like change each time. And that's gotta be that's what Buxy was talking about yesterday when he was saying how far is the mic from your mouth. And I thought I had it pretty far away, but today I kind of pulled it back even more. So maybe I can do a good job on monitoring that a little bit better in the future. Oh, you've got to have your speaker turned up, Buxy, for you to hear the audio. The audio is a little low. What about now? Is there any difference there? Oh shoot, what about now? I bet that made a huge difference. Normally, I'm really good about this, but on, on this particular one, I forgot to check my mic volume on my inline amplifier. Yeah, you're louder now. <laughs> okay. Is it is it comfortably louder or is it blowing y'all's eardrums out? You got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Man, I apologize. That's my fault. That's 100% my fault. I didn't check my inline amplifier. Okay, well, that should be... Oh, Joe, I wanted to let you know, I, I checked out that ENB you mentioned, and because I like Harlinson so much, and the ENB that you had... Well, you mentioned two ENBs, but I checked out the one with the real-time snow accumulation, and um, the red from the lighting here was uh 
really, really red. It was like oversaturated red. It was ugly. And that's very fixable. But I didn't want to go through the trouble of doing that whenever I already had an ENB that I really liked. Oh, a Skyrim mod just came out that literally retextures every texture in the game. What's it called? That might become the new standard. Although SMEM has been a go-to since the very, very early days of modding. Oh, what am I doing, man? See, I, I'm chatting with you guys and I'm not staying on topic. <laughs> I need to uh, I need to go check out this blood on the ice thing. Hey, speaking of off topic, I've been looking at the new Crusader Kings three. Holy smokes, that that looks so good, and I I really am trying to hold off on buying buying it right away. There's no reason for me to because I'm not going to play it. Um, there's another game that I, I bought recently that I've been working with to learn how to play. But that's the game I'm going to play in partnership with CK3 whenever I do get it. But I have been watching online videos, and uh, it looks absolutely terrific. Early in my radio days, an ex-pro sometimes did the show before mine, and he'd mess with the deck on purpose. That's mean. I'm really glad he did because it trained me to be looking at all my dials, make sure my settings were right. Ah, oh, nice. Nice. That's some tough love right there, huh? He, he was, <laughs> well, whether good intentions or not, he was forcing you to learn your game. <laughs> all did, is sad when someone has to die. Did you see what happened? Sorry. I thought I saw a fellow running away, but didn't get a good look at him. The retexture mob isn't mod isn't from Nexus, it's from LH mod site. It's called Skyrim Vanilla Overhaul Textures, so other mod retextured every single texture in the game. No other mod retextured every single texture in the game. Wow. Another one. Terrible. I heard a scream and came running, but she was already like this when I got here. Uh, no, sorry, but I did notice that her coin purse was still intact, so whoever did this wasn't after gold. I'm going to keep preparing the body, if you'll excuse me. Okay, report to the guard. Heard there We're literally standing on her grave. Vampire hunters <laughs> or something, in the old fort near Rif. Just like always, nobody saw anything useful. The bastards escaped again. Might be more to this if you'll let me help. Look, friend. If you think you can do better than the Legion of Guards, be my guest. You'll need to talk to your life, though. We can't just let anyone go around claiming to be an official business. If he's willing, then we'll talk. Talk to your life. Once daytime rises, we'll look for some shops and see if we can buy an amulet and a ring. And I need to keep my eyes open for a blue swallowtail so I can make another enchanting potion. Alright, interior looks good, guys. Because I added that... When I add the the plus 10 to brightness right here, it's going to put that on top of everything. Interior, dungeons, and outside. The Empire is putting a great deal of pressure on White Rock. And what would you have? But, um, but if it's too bright, we can... We can go down to normal or even darker on interior vision. So it's just not with us. He's against us. He knows that. They all know that. 
It's just whatever, uh, what you guys are seeing. Ooh, that's bright. <laughs> Move, Lydia. You've been seen in the company of the... These are difficult times indeed, when men stalk their brethren like beasts. My men are stretched thin as it is. If you okay, offer Buxy. your aid, I gladly accept. The guards will be told to assist you as necessary. I'm happy to lend a hand as much as I can as well. Examine the crime scene. All right, Buxy says uh, with the global plus 10, we can drop back down. On interior vision, we'll try normal. Yeah, that looks more normal to me. are becoming a real menace. Nobody likes the vamps. And let them die with their now see, off there by the throne, that looks pretty dark to me, but I think it should look dark also. There's no direct lighting here except right over this throne. I don't even know where that light's coming from. Oh, from... from these. See, even that looks that looks too bright to me. That glow, that glow should come up to about right here. It's not like we have roaring flames here. We have man, it shouldn't even come up to here. It should it should be like right here. These are just coals. But anyway, it, it's nitpicky. I'm I'm being I think I'm being a little bit nitpicky there, but that's light and shadows kind of something that I've always picked up on. Okay. Buxy, I'm, I'm going to go back in here. I want to drop this down to dark, and I want your opinion. Mod config. Cathedral weather. Settings. Go to a darker interior. Okay, is this too dark? Because the glow looks more appropriate. Meaning that the light fall off looks more appropriate too, but this is definitely a darker image overall. Wait until we get into a dungeon. Okay. Alright, well I'm going to go back to the halfway point of of normal and we'll do that we'll do exactly that we'll test it inside a dungeon i've got 333 carry weight on me i got a lot of stuff i need to sell oh you liked it darker okay And then we'll test in a dungeon as well. Okay, my items. What is it that I'm carrying that's weighing me down so much? Iron armor, glass war axe, iron mace, steel plate gauntlets. I got a lot of stuff. Let's travel back and smelt some of that down yeah uh, uh, 
we do have chat lag, but whenever I read your chats, I'm pretty sure I know where you're at. So I reset it back to darker. Interior vision darker. Because I, I knew what you were responding to. So I set it back. Oh, I don't know why I came in here. I need to uh, go to the smelter. Uh, steel plate gauntlets, yes. Uh, glass war axe, I think I'll just sell that. I don't see myself... Well, yeah. Sell it. I do not know how to... Oh, yeah, actually it does. Well, I see it on my chat program. I don't know how to put that into the video without recording it, and I don't want to record chat. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. If not, let me know. I might have it stored away. Well met. Unlike my... Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. Sell that. I don't need elven arrows. Well, I guess I could start collecting them, but... Meh. This gets me down to 261. I need to store this stuff. And I have ingots that I need to store. Um, I don't need the tusks or the onyx. I, I don't think I need the wolf pelt. Graham, you said something last broadcast I kind of missed at the time, but I watched it again. I'm very interested in hearing more about your ground radio days, if you can talk about it here. Yeah, um, probably the neatest thing that I did while I was in ground radio, well, there were two things. The first one was my first mission. So I was a young airman, and I got assigned to the Azores, where I looked over... Uh, something called global um, I don't know why I can't think of the name now global it, it was a high frequency radio system that was designed to be able to um, transmit around the world glo worldwide in case of nuclear fallout it was a Cold War era thing and the reason that it would survive is because it was made up of non-solid state um, components like transistors and resistors. It was old school technology. Well, an, EM, an EMP blast from a nuke only takes out solid state, IC chips, new transistors, stuff like that. And so this would remain operational and we would be able to, you know, the president could be up in Air Force One and and coordinate a counter-strike and lead the war effort, technically, from Air Force One using this global-wide HF. They were very powerful radios, and that's why when we were talking last, I was telling you that we would, um, we would go do a, a transmission test, and when you heard the feedback in your headset, that was proving that we had we were transmitting around the globe. And it was pretty cool. And the braggart did swagger and brandish his blade 
Okay, I'll start hanging on to elven arrows. And then the second most interesting thing for me was uh, Italy, where it wasn't radio so much. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing here. We were actually working with a tactical satellite. So this is like a mobile man pack type thing that you can wear. It was mobile. You could wear it in a backpack on your back. And um, we were one of like three test sites. We were the lead one, actually, that was working directly with the company to get this technology going because... It was a new kind of satellite that could, um, let's see, do I need to keep all this stuff? It split, it took a lot of different users. Let's just say me, you, and Joa, because the challenge we were running to at the time, uh, US, the challenge we were running t into at the time was um, oversaturation. We didn't have enough satellite bandwidth for the amount of customers requesting support. And so we needed a new way to finagle that. And what we came up with is you could have multiple users and you would split their conversations up into little micro bits of data. And you would queue everybody up one after the other. Let's say it's me, you, Joa, and three other people that are listening to this broadcast. And, and a dedicated satellite channel, we only had three of them. But we've got a total of six people requesting support. Well, this new technology would take your conversation and it would split it up into a microsecond. And it would take Joa's conversation, split it up into a microsecond, take mine, split it up into a microsecond, and so on and so forth, and, and line us all up in a queue. So that for us, you and I, we don't, the human ear can't pick up any delays at that short of a time period. But, but they're funneling all six of these conversations into one satellite channel. So it was called Demand Access Multiple Assign. And uh, that was really cool. That was a, that was a lot of fun. The fact that we were we were testing that, learning how to use it, finding out new ways of setting up antennas to get better uh, better transmission quality and stuff like that. Okay, I'm still at 223. Oh, that's because. I gotta drop off my alchemical ingredients. And then we're gonna go continue this quest I was doing. I've worked with the Netherlands Air Force before though. We, um, we had a uh, exercise up in Denmark where I got to work with a bunch of different nations. The Danish military, the Netherlands military, um, I think the Brits were represented there. The Germans were there. We almost ended up in a fight with the Germans. That was funny. Um, <laughs> just nothing. It was just a bunch of too many young guys packed into a bar. <laughs> you know, just stuff's going to happen. <laughs> In that particular event, though, we were the good guys. Everybody else was telling the Germans to get out. <laughs> uh, we were field. Te we were doing both. We were uh, we were testing back at home station, but we also would field test on exercises. So we would have a mobile setup. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> It's not my Air Force. The Danes the Danes were good to work with, though. And, and I don't know that they actually even had an Air Force contingency, but we worked with their military. And, of course, it was their homeland, so they were the ones. They, they, they were orchestrating where we slept at and, and 
where all these different units would go set up shop at, you know, and, and there, it was a NATO exercise. So we were running war games and everybody had a place to set up in the field and we had blue team and red team and all that stuff. It was, it was really neat. It's a lot of fun. So I don't know that the, that there was a Danish Air Force presence, so to speak, but there was definitely Danish military presence, and they were the ones orchestrating everything as, as the host nation. And Denmark, by the way, is just a terrifically fun place, enjoyable place to visit. The people there are amazing, uh, a rich history. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time in Denmark. Everybody I ran into in Denmark was cool and was was excited about meeting us also. I, I thought that was, it was just a terrific experience. We're going to go ahead and click save. In the next episode, we're going to pick up on that quest. I am, how much carry weight? I'm still, let's see, 151. That's about where I want to be. So we'll save this. And uh, again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Uh, thank you for coming by the channel. I hope you like what you saw. And I will see you in the next episode where this story continues. Stream stays up. Thanks for visiting Aesop Grimm's Chronicles. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. I hope to see you in the next episode. And until then, stay shiny.